was 10 times national champion Peter Curry that got things kicked off with a win at the NZ Sprint Bowl at Mary Mary's Round 2 of the Mount Fresh Superboats after the washout at Round 1 in Waitra. We were back at Waitra for Round 3. And striking problems early was the current Superboat World Champion, Glenn Head, along with Olivia Van Dersen in the navigator's seat. This in the top 12 eliminations would see them not make the finals. Mechanical issues and resulting visibility problems stopped Graham Hill in his Nissan-powered liquid gold. And it was the same boat that took the win in Waitra, just not the same driver. Peter Coey had lent Sam Newdick and Glenn Mason his boat after the mechanical woes at Mary Mary's Round 2. Everything about Coey's boat was slightly different to Newdick's, but it didn't stop the three times Group A champion from taking the win. So if we have a look at the points, it is the 10-time national champion Peter Coey on top from Blake Bryant and Kate Hugerbrug in second place. Just past the halfway stage in the championship and the drivers moved to the Riverside Jet Track for the fourth round of the Altherm Window Systems New Zealand Jet Sprinting Championship. Sam Newick and Glenn Mason were back in their own boat and looking for win number two. Also back after smoke signals from round one, Graham Hill in liquid gold. And still chasing the elusive win in their new class, Blake Bryant in Buzz Bugs Harvest Transport. Also making a great first half of the season, Rotorua's Nick Berryman at New Zealand River Jet. Back at a track he knows well and enjoys. Always a nice little track, flows well, and the, the hairpin is the money corner like most tracks are. So if we can um, just get around there and exit good and, and the rest of the track doesn't seem to have any, any real bad corners which when you come around again you get the dirty water and wash. Generally speaking I think it's, um, um, it's obviously a lot of time as there always is in the hairpin. Um, but everywhere else is pretty straightforward. There's a little bit of rough water, but um, generally fairly, um, a fairly safe rotation. This is the first time I've been on Hastings, so it's a bit hard for me to comment, but it's cool. It flows nice, it's nice clean water, and um, yeah, it's a good trick. It's very full, more water level depth than we've normally uh, raced here, and a slightly different rotation too, so it's all, it's good. Oh, I love this track, it's, it's perfect, it's fast, it's flowing, it's got big wide channels, so really suits a boat like ours and hey, hopefully we can be there at the end of the day. It's always a challenge here, um, given that hairpin, it, it catches a lot of people and, and um, the rest of the rotation generally here is, is quite flowing and you can keep your foot hard up it, but it's just um, that hairpin is, is where it's at. After mechanical dramas at Mary Mary meant that Sam may have had to sit out round three at the Methanex Aquatrack, up stepped Peter Coey, who offered him a drive. Yeah, it was a bit of a surprise really, um, hopping in um, Pete's boat, he was kind enough to give us the drive and uh, yeah, it was a different beast of what we're used to, it's a lot more power and um, the setup's a little bit different but you know, it was all in all a comfortable boat to drive and we ended up doing the goods and beating him in his own boat which was a bit of a surprise but a good surprise nonetheless. Yeah, the uh, Pistons finally arrived from the States and um, the boys put it all together this week and fired it up and everything sounded crisp and mint and yeah, after the first two runs we're happy with how it's going and everything seems to be singing the, the nice tune and it's a bit of a step up um, in power and, and reaction time really um, compared to the Group A's and Group B's we've come from. Um, yeah, it's not so much scary, it's just a timing thing. Um, you, you creep up on those turns and, and you get to that top speed uh, a lot quicker than what you used to so you just got to set up a lot quicker and, and just get your timing right which is the hardest part. After a lot of hard work in the off season Nick Berryman was more than happy with his progress this year in New Zealand River Jet. It's the best season we've had for a long time um, sitting third overall which is something unexpected with the field being the best biggest field in ever you know 17 super boats starting the season so uh, yeah we're, we're real happy. Not only the class sponsor through his company Mouthfresh, but these days Rob Coley is one of the old hands in the Superboat. Season so far, well, we've had a bit of a mixed bag. I mean, last week we, or uh, well, two weeks ago, went to sleep and uh, missed a turn, so we were out in the top 12, which is a bit frustrating because uh, everything seemed to be on song and the boat was going nice, but uh, handling well. Today, well, we'll see what happens. We um, seem to be sort of round about there, but to be honest, the boat's feeling a bit flat. I just don't know why. We're just going to see, check a few things out now and see if we can get a bit more power out of it. Never lacking for power, or courage, or commitment, it had been the small things that had made for a frustrating first half of the season for Glen Head and Eltherm Window Systems. Bit of a rough start for us, obviously you had the cancellation at Waitra and uh, a couple of mishaps in the last two rounds, so hey, we're just trying to, uh, trying to build from that. Hastening that process, the very changeable weather in Hastings. 
obviously if it gets worse there's going to be a few people having a bit of a moan about uh, weather conditions so we'll just see what happens later in the day. For Richard Burt, the development continues, now getting around the power delivery of the rotor boat, vastly different from the usual V8s. We seem to have about a thousand RPM more usable power with the rotary engine, uh, so it doesn't matter what RPM I'm pulling, you stand on the throttle and it seems to go again, which the V8 I found that hits a sort of brick wall, won't go any faster, um, and then you sort of tune the boat around that, but I haven't found the brick wall with this thing yet. Sitting second in points in the Mouthfair Superboat class, Blake Bryant and Kate Hoogerbrug are still ironing out the kinks, including the all-important bond between navigator and driver. With Blake, I've got a bit of a calming influence on him. Um, he trusts me and I trust him. I know everything he's thinking, he knows everything I'm thinking, I know exactly what to say. Um, I'm basically a little bird on his ear when he's going around the track because we, we do talk to each other through the intercoms, I don't use my hand. She is a calming influence and no, um, at this stage I've got to just try and up my game and it's gonna, um, she won't let me hear the end of it if that's how the way that it stacks up at the end of the season. If she's, if she's ahead of me in points as the top navigator, well, yeah, I won't live that down. First things first, we've got to make the top five. We think top five consistency is just paramount to be in with a, a shot at the, the title. And so far we've achieved that. In fact, we've had top threes. Um, today's possibly going to be a shorter meeting with the weather, so um, you can see the guns are coming out blazing from a lot of the other teams early. Guns blazing is the only way that Peter Coey knows. Ten national titles, testimony to that. And it was the same here, constantly searching for more performance. Yeah, we're making good progress. The boys are downloading some data at the moment, just making sure that NZ motor's happy. And uh, Phil from Tracksport put a new set of valve springs in it, just as a, a maintenance thing that we do. And uh, just put of an animal when it's got new valve springs in it, I can tell you. Even though the air pressure today is really bad, it's a mile different to where we were at Taranaki. So overall, I guess we've got to be happy uh, from where we stand right at the moment. Hopefully we're, we're feeling that way at the end of the day. They say there's no substitute for experience. If you're only logging minutes on the water per round and it's your first full season, it's tough. Kevin Roberts explains. This is only my first season in Superboat, so I've spent all of 10 minutes in the boat in total racing. But yeah, no, it's good. We're enjoying it. No stranger to racing, Roberts is a veteran of the stock car wars, but brand new to boats. He jumped in boots and all with Stinger. We bought Stinger out about three years ago, I suppose, um, and just a, it's just a hobby business. Um, but yeah, it's going quite well. In the lower classes, most of them are in Stinger. Um, super boats we've yet to really crack. Um, Coey's he's better than us at the moment, but we'll get there. Um, you've got Blake Bryant and, and Nick Berryman, and they're all in the super class boats. Um, and they're getting up there, so it's just time. With the inclement weather looming, time might have been a bit precious at Hastings. Running out of time, Gary Stevens in Rapids Jet. This in the top 12 eliminations. But it was even worse for Richard Burt and Hayley Hose. A mechanical issue meant that they didn't make it to the eliminations here at Crownthorpe. The pictures telling the whole story. Oil pump belt has snapped, we lost oil pressure, uh, noticed out in the boat so we just shut it off. So as you notice that last run I went the wrong way, it just happened before that so can't find a belt. Even Peter Coe has been through his toolbox looking for belts for us so we've got some amazing supporters with the rotor boat but uh, unfortunately it's not our day. So if we cut this huge superboat field to just eight as we get into the meat and drink of the eliminations here at Hastings. Continuing the trend that they started at round two at the NZ Mary Mary High Banks, the Featherston couple of Scott Donald and Nicole Reesby made the top eight again with a 46027 in Wet n Wild. The 45940 that Robin Ange Coley posted was good enough to make the eight and a chance of making the finals at Hastings. They are fourth quickest in Poison Ivy. For Hastings nurseryman Graham Hill, this was his home track. His 45.8 in the previous eliminations would not be repeated here. His 47048 not good enough to make the five. Brian and Kate Hugerbrug had been through the 45 second bracket in the top 16 and did it again here in the 8 to make the 5 with a 44.679. Nick Berryman and 
Tanya Ironmonger's top eight time of a 46.215, third quickest of the day, was still not good enough for the combo sitting third in Mouthfresh Superboat points to get through to the five. Kelly and Louise Blythe had been chasing Sam Udick virtually since unloading their boat. He'd beaten him in the 16, but here in the 8 is 44.998, just a shade off Udick's pace again, but he was third quickest. Second fastest on the water in the two previous eliminations had been Sam Udick. The new livery on the boat looked fast standing still and even quicker at the speed Sam was pushing. Quick here again with a 44.894. The boat everyone was trying to catch was the Eltham Window System Sprint Tech G-Force of Glenn Head and Olivia Van Dersen. A 42 in the top 16 and a 43.349 here in the 8. Pretty cool to see a big crowd here at Hastings today and um, obviously a fair bit of interest in the boat, obviously just posting a reasonably quick time, so it's quite good, yeah. So we'll cut them from eight and then there will be just five and it's Glenn Head and Olivia Van Dersen on top from Blake Bryan and Kate Hugerbrack, Sam Newdick and Glenn Mason, then it is Peter Coey. More Jets for an action coming from Hastings right after this. Well, we've found our top five in the Eltham Window Systems 2017 New Zealand Jet Sprinting Championships in the Mouthfresh Superboat class. And we start off with the man that is the title sponsor of the class, and that will be Rob and Ange Coley. The boat is Poison Ivy. It's a 705 cube against Donovan, puts out around about 1170 horsepower, Sprint Tech G-Force hull, and it's a pretty good combination. The sponsors are Global Products and Mouthfresh Oral Care. Top eight time for Rob was a 45.940. So he'll be looking to improve on that, although he was complaining about a little bit of a lack of power. Hard to see, look at that, through the hairpin. Hard to see, as I was saying, when you've got uh, over a 1,000 horsepower under your right foot and his wife doing the navigational duties. You're on board with him here as he flies down this multi-island course that is the Riverside Jet Track. Probably the most picturesque course we go to. 34.361 at the split. Best time so far, that 45.940. Well, he's just lost a little hair of pace there and uh, this is going to blow out just a little bit, I think. This time's not going to please Rob Coley at all. He is a competitive animal, and this one's going to be over the 51 second mark. 51041. Certainly not what Rob and Ange Coley were looking for. They won't be happy with that. Next to go, it is Peter Coey and Louise Blythe. The boat is NZ Trojan Total Oils. It's a Sprint Tech G Force. Of course, it is. That's how Peter makes his living building these boats. You're on board with them here. Louise Blythe doing a fantastic job. She's slotted in as if she's never been away from the navigator's chair. She uh, replaced Sharma Puttaranui, of course, and uh, Sharma replaced Karen Marshall. It's been a string of very experienced co-drivers, and Peter's got a good one here. Let's have a look at the split time for Coey, the 10-time champion. Probably needs to be sub-30, and it is easily 28.889 for the uh, Sprint Tech NZ. Trojan, Total Oils is the boat name. It's powered by a 575 track sport engine carved out of a solid block of uh, billet aluminium. Doesn't quite run the huge horsepower, but he gets the job done with a 44.620. It should see him through into the three. Bit of chat going on there between navigator and co-driver as they bring it back to the wharf. Made a fin change uh, for that last run, gave me a little bit more traction. Uh, particularly through the right hand corners, it was good. Um, I think I'll do a trim change now if we get into the final, but I don't know, I don't know how the lap times are looking to be quite honest with you, but it's going to be a tight final. Well, Peter Coey has said a mouthful there. Sam Udick, the winner at Waitra in Coey's boat because the pistons and engine parts didn't arrive on time, but they're here now, so normal transmission has been resumed. Udick and the vastly experienced Glenn Mason in PSP. It is a Sprint Tech G-Force hull. Top eight time was a 44.998. We're into the top five from here. We'll cut them down to three and we'll find our podium getters here at Hastings. Round four of the Eltham Window Systems New Zealand Jet Sprinting Championships. Having a look for the split here, 28.090. So once again, he is quick. Peter Coey's split was a 28.889, so he's faster than Coey. Down to the top end of the course now. Look at the way the boat sits flat on the water. He's another one that says he doesn't have the mega horsepower that the likes of uh, Glenn Head and maybe Rob Coley has, but he gets the job done. 44.465.
is the time. So that's the fastest time we've seen so far. We've posted our fastest time so far of the day. So we were um, oh, about three runs before we did our fastest, a 44.6 or something. The last two previous to this one were a 44.8. So we're a little bit frustrated, but um, made a couple of changes and went a little bit quicker, but not quite quick enough yet, though. Well, what's it going to take to make the three? Is Blake Bryant and Kate Hugerbrook going to be able to do it? Blake and Kate's first season in Mouthfree Superboat. The boat is a stinger, as you would expect, because Blake's uncle, Rex Bryant, is to build them. Uh, a past uh, Group A champion. Blake's been two times uh, Group A runner-up. What can he do this time? Nice and clean out of the hairpin. That's the money corner here at Hastings. The Riverside Jet Tracks around four of the championships. Heading down towards the split uh, portion of the circuit now. Needs to be in the 28s. Is it going to be a 28? Yes, it is. 28-441. So that's faster than what we saw from Peter Coey, but not quite as quick as Sam Udick. So the order is being finalised here with uh, three races still to come. Who will it be? Will Blake Bryant be amongst it with Katie Hugerbrack, will it be Sam Newdick going for win number two on the bump? Let's see what happens. 44.506 for Bryant. Yeah, no, we're happy. Look, it's um, that felt really good. Sounds like we're in the final. Um, we're really happy. So one to go, and that will be the fastest combination on the water here at Hastings. Glenn Head and Olivia Van Dersen. They dipped into the 42s in the top 16. They did a 43-349 in the eight. What are we going to see here from the fastest combination? They are the current world champions. Well, Glenn Head is the current world champion. Olivia Van Dersen sits alongside him in the navigator's seat. Have a look at the way the boat sits flat on the water, and it sits flat right through the hairpin. That's the money corner here at Hastings, and they got it absolutely bang on looking for a split time. They have been sub 28 seconds. That will give you an indication of what the completed run's going to be. 27.989, just a tick under 28 seconds, but it's still quick. And look at the way the boat's heading down the back straight now, and it's slowed. Can you believe it? There's more dramas here for the Eltham Window Systems team. Well, you couldn't have written it if you were writing a book. You couldn't have scripted it worse for Glenn Head. What looked so promising, it looked like another low 43 or even a high 42 has ended up in a DNF for the world champion. So we've found our three and sadly Glenn Head won't be amongst them, but it's Sam Udick, Blake Bryant and Peter Coey. They'll be battling it out for the final here at Hastings. Now this is Peter Coey and Louise Blythe. He's a canny uh, sort of person, is the man from Canterbury. Started his racing career in cars, decided cars wasn't for him, boats is what it was all about. And uh, well, he's got the results on the board, hasn't he? A 10 time New Zealand champion, a multiple world champion. Louise Blythe sits alongside him, done a fair bit of navigational duties in her time in jet sprints as well, with the likes of uh, Leighton Manel and also Paul Gaston. Having a look for the split time for Peter Coey in the three, 30.889. Well, that's about what we've come to expect from Coey. Will that translate into a 44 second clocking or will it be slightly slower? He's the first to go. He sets the benchmark. Remember, all the other times mean nothing. Heading down towards the finish line now and Coey's time is a 40. 44.113. Well, is that going to be catchable? Blake Bryant, Katie Hugerbrug go next. Bars Bugs Harvest Transport is the boat. It's got the Fonzie Mullen engine in the back of it. It's a stinger hull. Two times he's been runner up in Group A. Hasn't claimed a win yet in the Mouth Free Superboat class, but he sits second in the points from consistency. Brand spanking you to the Superboats, just gets it a little bit wrong, perhaps at the hairpin, maybe costing him a tenth, maybe a little bit more. Top five time was a 44.506. We're into the three, we're into the finals here at Hastings. The weather's held off. It's a 28.782 at the split. That was slightly slower than his top five split. So he's really got to haul the mail and bring it home now. Time to beat is Peter Coey's 44. 0.113. Blake Bryant and Katie Hugerbrook, one corner to negotiate. They'll be through the finishing beam, and it's a 44.877. So they stay in second place with Sam Newdick and Glenn Mason to come. Top three, we're stoked. You know, as we said earlier in the day, we'll be happy. Top five is the first step, and if we get in top three, that's even better. We're disappointed we didn't finish with our last run. I think we still had a little bit more left, but I just tried a little hard and overdrove. 
One boat to come, and here they are, Sam Newdick and Glenn Mason. Can they make it two for two? They won in Whitra. That was in Peter Coey's boat. Here they are, back in their own boat, PSP Racing. They're on board with the vastly experienced navigator that is Glenn Mason, guiding his driver, Sam Newdick, around this multi-island course. Seven islands set in this picturesque setting that is the Riverside Jet Track. It is round number four of the Eltham Window Systems New Zealand Championships. From here, we go to Whanganui, and then we finish in the South Island, having a look for the split time. It was a 28 So it's slightly slower in the top three. Now, can he bring it home? 44.465 he did in the five. And it was a helter-skelter run through to the flag. What's it going to be this time? Time to beat is Peter Coey's 44.113. He does beat it. 43.847. Sam Udick makes it two for two in different boats. The crew are happy. Sam Udick will be ecstatic. What a way to finish here at Hastings. That's a rush, man. It was it was good enough to get the win uh, last round and in a borrowed boat. And... Uh, something with a lot more horses than this thing here but um, to come here and do what we did um, just an all round effort by our team is an amazing feeling because just bring on more, bring on more. So Mason and you to get to do the victory lap here at Hastings. Outstanding mate, I love it. And the experienced Glenn Mason gets the last words. Let's have a quick look at the points. Sam Udick and Glenn Mason make it two for two. After winning in a borrowed boat at Waitara, they come home in PSP Racing here at Hastings. They pick up the maximum of 30 points. In second place, it is Peter Coey and Louise Blythe. And in third, it's Blake Bryant and Katie Hugerbrook. It's still the 10-time national champion out front in the points chase in Mouthfresh Superboats. Well, we move from the picturesque setting of Hastings to the Shelterview Aquatrack, but we're going to change it up a little bit for the penultimate round of the championships. We're going to do it in the dark. Exciting racing, plenty of crashing, big crowd. It's going to be mega. We'll see you there.